Hey guys, this is the start of a, I believe, three-day trip, two or three-day trip. I am exploring the mountains of East Central Idaho on this trip, kind of the high desert mountains. You recently saw this area in a video of mine where I slept in the front seat of my car. I tried that out, but the weather was not very good then. It was incredibly windy, so I didn't really spend much time there. I just camped there and then came home the next morning. On this trip, we're spending a little bit more time in this area. We're gonna be hiking over this way to a lake, hopefully a scenic lake that, uh, you know, a nice spot. Maybe we'll do some fishing while we're there. And uh, yeah, I'm excited to explore this area. The lake that I'm hiking to is, I believe about two and a half miles away. I have to kind of go up and over a ridge. I think I have about a thousand feet of elevation gain. Looks like there's a little cave up here. Let's go check that out, see if it's worth exploring. Well, it's a cave. Not a whole lot else to say about it. But the thing that I think is kind of cool about these, these caves is that you think surely at some point some Native Americans who are out hunting took refuge in a place like this to escape the heat of the day or to you know, spend the night. I don't see any, you know, indications of that, but I'm, you know, surely it happened. Looks like we have an old cabin here. This would be such a cool area to have a cabin. It's so just out there and remote. Well, it's been a little under an hour. It's been like 55 minutes. I made it to the top of the ridge, which is actually kind of a little pass. Wanted to show you some of the, the scenery around here. It's a beautiful area. We're gonna drop down now into this other valley, this other canyon here. Somewhere over here is the lake that I'm heading to, somewhere down in here. All right, we made it. The lake looks beautiful. Nice little spot. Yeah, I am going to fish this this lake here. I have a few different rods with me. I have two Tenkara rods. Um, this is uh, basically fixed line fly fishing. There's no reel. This is my preferred way to fish. If I catch multiple fish, I will uh, show you guys the first one here and you can check out the rest on my Tenkara channel and I'll put a link to that video in the description. Oh, got one. There it is. Wow. Beautiful fish. Well guys, it's been a couple of hours and uh, had a great time fishing this lake. Caught several fish, I think maybe, I don't know, six or seven. The day has gotten colder and windier and it's even snowed a little bit. Definitely, definitely snowing. Uh, I had to wade into the lake to effectively fish, and so my feet are pretty cold and wet. Let's get out of here. But uh, let's do one last look at this area. I mean, it really is beautiful up here. If you have an ATV or some other kind of vehicle, or a mountain bike even, horse, whatever, you can ride it up here. And I actually did get a mountain bike recently. I got a used Trek mountain bike for like $115. And uh, it's not amazing, but I think it'll be good enough for the kinds of things that I want to do. And uh, I'll talk more about that bike and show it to you more in future videos. Anyway, I'm going to hike back to the car now. I'll see you guys, uh, maybe not back at the car, but uh, at wherever our next destination is.
So it's a few hours later. To make a long story short, I've been scoping out different areas, driving around. I didn't really have anything planned, and so I just kind of drove up different canyons and and that kind of thing, did some exploring. And I found this canyon about an hour ago. It's called Skull Canyon. Very rugged, tons of cliffs. There's some caves and I've even seen a couple little arches. It's been sprinkling a little bit, hasn't been raining. Rather than just wait in the car, let's just drive up the canyon and I'll show you a couple of things up the canyon. So the first thing I wanted to show you is just the canyon itself. This canyon is crazy. It gets to be almost a slot canyon that you can drive through up here in a minute. All right, and now the canyon opens up a little bit. Still extremely rugged, but uh, you don't get that feeling of claustrophobia. This is where I turned around the first time I explored this canyon. There's another potential campsite right here. And the road just keeps going up and up and up into the mountains. Okay, so we're back in the canyon and behind me here you can see this thing, this wooden fence. And I figured when I first saw it on my first trip through the canyon that it was maybe for a part of a corral to like corral animals in this little alcove over here. But then I pulled over and I took a closer look and I'm not entirely sure what this is. Maybe you guys can, can help. So what is this? At first I thought it looked like something for an archeological dig. And I thought, maybe it's a grave? Is there like a cow buried here? See these bones here? I just don't know what this is. All right, we are back at camp. Let me show you what's for dinner. Got it heating up. So lately I've been making meals at home and just bringing them to heat up while camping. I did that today too. For this trip, we've got fried rice. I made this fried rice yesterday. Made a big old Tupperware thing of it. I'll have the other half of it tomorrow. And I'm just reheating it. I just used the recipe that's on the back of the fried rice seasoning packet. Basically, it's just rice, eggs, ham, and onion, and seasoning, and soy sauce. And I have it heating up inside the car to get it out of the wind. Hope you enjoyed the day's adventures. I had a really good time today. I just love this area. I love the the starkness of it. I love the barrenness of it. I love the exposed rocks and the rugged canyons and the broad valley out there with just nothing in it. I love it. Good morning everyone. It's a bright chilly morning but uh, it'll be a nice warm day today. Slept great last night. Got nine or ten hours of sleep. Can't complain. First order of business uh, is to head back out to the main valley out here. Back out this way. So this area is really remote and very sparsely populated today. Like there are some ranches out in the valley, but otherwise it's it's pretty uh, pretty isolated. Not a whole lot of people. But back in the day, this was actually um, kind of a boom town area. There were several little mining towns in the in this valley out here in the Birch Creek Valley, and all of those mines needed charcoal for smelting the ore that came out of the mines, and so they built these mines here and uh, you can still see them today. The kilns were built in 1866, which is earlier than I thought. That's, that's pretty early. And the kilns produced charcoal for the smelter at Nicolia for about two years. And this was one of the towns in the area. 
12 of the kilns were torn down and the bricks were used for other buildings in the Lemhi Valley and the Snake River Plain. As you can see, that's the row of the 16 kilns as they once stood. And now we've got four of them. We've got this guy, another three over here. Not a whole lot left on the inside here. Forty or fifty cords of wood cut into four foot length chunks were placed in here at a time. And then uh, basically the the openings are mostly covered up and then the wood is allowed to burn. And uh, because there isn't a lot of air, the, wo the wood doesn't burn completely and that creates charcoal. And once it's been thoroughly heated, then uh, the openings are, are opened back up again and the charcoal is removed to the smelting plants at the mines. I really enjoy seeing little bits of the Old West like this. You can only imagine what this area would have looked like uh, 150 plus years ago. It would have been very different, but in a way that is kind of the opposite of how these things usually go. Usually you look at a place now and there are a lot of people and you think, oh, I wonder what it was like with no people. But apparently there were like tens of thousands of people living and working and mining in this valley. Um, and there are not that many out here now. So it would have been inter interesting to see this place in the mining heyday. Well, it's lunchtime now, it's about 1.15. So let me show you what I have in the fridge. We have some grapes, gonna snack on some of those, and then kind of a cheese and meat platter. Good morning, everyone. And yes, it is morning. It is the next morning. I didn't really have much else to show you guys yesterday. And then when I drove to this campsite, it was uh, raining, basically. And then it snowed, so it just wasn't a, a great time to fill you in. But I'm in a pretty magical place right now. This campsite is, is unreal. You already saw it in the drone footage, but I'm just right on the edge of this lake, this beautiful mountain lake. And again, it snowed last night, so there's a, a dusting of snow on the trees. Just a beautiful spot. But today, the plan is to go home. Uh, I'll drive out of here, drive back down into the valley below to the town of Ledor, Idaho, get gas, and then drive home through Montana. Uh, I'm not going to stop anywhere, I don't think, in Montana. Anyway, let's hop in the car and get out of here. So this road that I'm on, this unpaved road, leads up and over the Continental Divide. And the Continental Divide is the border between the two states, between Idaho and Montana. So I'm just driving up this canyon that'll lead me up to the Continental Divide. All right, we are at the top here. It says historical site and then Bannock Pass Summit. Except that I don't think, <laughs> I think this sign over here, I think that's where the historical marker sign was, but it's not there anymore. But I think the sign probably would have said something like the early Native Americans used to use this pass to go between the valleys on either side. And here is our first look into Montana. 
And what do you know, it looks the same as Idaho. And again, this is the Continental Divide here. We are at 7,672 feet. And so that means that on the east side of the pass here, out in Montana, all the water, all the streams, all the rivers here, they all flow east and south to the Atlantic, or to waters connecting to the Atlantic. And then over here, on the Idaho side, all the waters out here flow into the Pacific and waters connecting to the Pacific. I'm gonna stop talking in the video here. From here on out, I'm just gonna show you some of the, the landscape of southwestern Montana as I'm driving through it, and I'll play music or something like that. But uh, thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this three-day adventure. Let me know what your favorite part of the video was. Let me know what you think. I'll see you guys in the next one. Mm -hmm.